Hey guys, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, do what you got to do, YouTube world. Uh, for everybody else, follow us on social media at the FF Sackos and go ahead and check out our website, the fantasy football sackos.com for everything you need fantasy football this season. Let's go. Welcome to the fantasy football Sackos podcast with your hosts, Jason Shalcross and Alex Krog. Let's go. All right. Fantasy football sackos. What Back episode again. is this? 16, buddy. We're at wow. 16. Dang. In three, three months, two and a half months. Unreal. It's cranking out the content. Ah, doing what we can for the people. All right. Uh, today's episode, we are talking... Players to avoid. Don't do it. While drafting your team, we think that these guys are either ranked too high or they are ranked at their ceiling. And uh, let's go. Let's let's get into it. So our player number one that we think you guys should evaluate avoiding and listen to us why uh, while drafting your teams this season is Calvin Ridley. Of the Uh-oh. of the Atlanta Falcons, I have a feeling that I think we're gonna. I well, Alex is is more standoffish, a little more cool on Calvin Ridley than I am. I th- that's that's just in general though. That that has nothing to do with the player. That's just <laughs> me being a jerk all the time. <laughs> it's the Chicago in into you. Yeah. All right. So let's talk a little bit about Calvin. Um, So I'm going to give our consensus rankings, our individual rankings, and then we're going to talk about ESPN's rankings as well as their ADP. Our consensus rankings is uh, 65th overall. I have him at 62. Alex has him at 70. ESPN has him as the 42nd overall football player this season. So again, we're talking like a 20 spot difference here. Um, so ESPN has him ranked at 42 overall. His ADP is 41 and a half. Yep. Like he is going in the, what the beginning of the fourth round right now. Um, and at wide receiver 14 overall, uh, in current average draft position. So yikes, it's very high. That that's so high for the second wide receiver on a team, fourteenth overall at the position. Right. Um, I mean the 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 only other teams that that's happening on is what Cooper Cup with Robert Woods and you got Tampa Mike Bay. Evans and right and and Godwin. So this is just a third team to throw into that mix where you're taking uh-huh. a second wide receiver before you're taking number ones on other teams. Which that's I don't, I don't so, know. it's so that's hard for me to do. The only way that that is a sustainable thing that can happen is if you are throwing a crap ton of pass attempts to justify the volume for two people. And if there was a team to do it, maybe it is the Atlanta Falcons, considering they led the league in passing attempts last season. Right. Um, Ridley's stats from last season, he had 93 targets, 63 catches, 866 yards, seven touchdowns. He finished as wide receiver 25 with 165 and a half points. Um, Should also be noted in that, that he missed the last three games of the year. Well, even, even more so after, let me, let's, let's talk about some per game stats after they traded Mo Sanu and he really got the playing time elevation. They traded the Falcons traded Muhammad Sanu in week eight of last season. After that point, Calvin Ridley averaged eight and a half targets a game, uh, almost six catches a game, more than 82 yards a game and uh, a half of a touchdown a game. So he scored a touchdown in every other football game he played as a 16 game season that equates to 131 targets, 91 catches for more than 1300 yards and eight touchdowns, which would have which equates to 225 points or wide receiver three last year. I don't think that that. that's, that's, that's not sustainable. Um, 
It's not, but it's not unrealistic in that offense where they're they're so pass happy and Julio's commanding a lot of the coverage and with Calvin Ridley, you know, we, we've talked about other wide receivers, right? With DJ Moore uh, b- being the main one that, <clears throat> excuse me, you could be looking at taking like that, that third year leap and this is Calvin Ridley's third year. Without so it, it, most of right, there. It, right. And it, it really could set up for him to just explode. Yes, it really can. Um, there was a coaching change and I want to address it. Uh, Steve Sarkeesian is gone and Dirk Cutter is back. He was the Falcons offensive coordinator from 2012 to 14. And there's just going to be such a huge drop off. I mean, when uh, when Dirk Cutter was the Falcons offensive coordinator from 2012 to 2014, Matt Ryan only averaged or or only threw at least 630 attempts in each of those seasons. He, <laughs> he only completed 415 passes and he only threw for a minimum of 4,500 yards in those seasons. And he only threw at least 26 touchdowns with uh, a high of 32 scores in 2012. So there's you just going to be a hot. monumental, monumental drop off in offensive production. Um, between these offensive coordinators here. Like there's not going to be a drop off at all at all. Like not even remotely. So I'm, I am, I'm excited. Um, I am a little interested to see what the Falcons offense looks like with like an actual running back back there. Assuming Gurley is healthy, at least to start the season. But Dante Freeman was, was he was a real running back, but I think Gurley's yes. got considerably more talent than him. Yes, Absolutely. Um, so what I want to talk about is that after Mo Sanu was traded, Calvin Ridley commanded almost a 20% target share, which would have been all the way down at 25th in terms of target share at the position. However, because they threw the ball almost 700 times, he would have commanded almost 125 targets and been 15th in targets at the position. So assuming he catches 70% of those, he would have had 87 catches, which would have been 10th. You lose Austin Hooper frees up 97 more targets. Yeah, but he's getting replaced by triple H with, with Hayden Hurst Helmsley. So yeah, but I don't know if it's a one for one though. I mean, Hurst won't have a preseason to learn the system. It's true. And so maybe he comes on, I think, as the season progresses. But like I don't I don't realistically know how well he's going to just be able to get thrown in there. So um I'm high on Calvin Ridley. I think he's going to have an excellent season, especially if they keep that's with the caveat that they keep throwing the ball, you know, close to 45 and a half, 50 times a game. So, yeah. So we, we were low on it. Well, not necessarily. We <laughs> um, our positional rankings, we have them at consensus 33 at the position. I have him all the way up at 26. Alex has him down at 37, which I think you're going to raise. And, Yep. ESPN, but ESPN has him at 15. Like, ha, 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 ha. like is that, I think that's like, that's gotta be close to his ceiling. Like let's, let, you want to talk ADPs around where he's going? All right. So his current average draft position is 41 and a half or 40, 42 overall. Um, as wide receiver 14. Would you rather have Calvin Ridley or Juju Smith-Schuster? Juju. Juju is going after Calvin Ridley at 45th overall right now. Would you rather have Calvin Ridley or Bob Woods? Robert Woods. He's going at 48th overall compared to 42 for Calvin Ridley. Uh, A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown. Is going ahead of... Calvin, Allen Robinson. I would definitely take Allen Robinson over him. They're going at the exact same place, basically. 
So you would take all of those guys and several of them are going after Calvin Ridley. It is so hard to draft a team's second wide receiver in the beginning of the fourth round as a fringe wide receiver one is where you have to draft him to get him. And I think that that is close to his ceiling. And I'm worried about a, a, maybe a dud game here or there. If Julio takes over for 300 yards, you know, I mean, I'm just, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, a, a couple other guys, I mean, T Y Hilton's going after him. Odell Beckham jr. Is going after him. Yeah. So, tr- you know, trying to leave some of those guys on the board and taking, the second best wide receiver on a team and granted you know we've established that atlanta throws the ball a ton it's just crazy to even think about i mean he he was wide receiver 25 last year he missed the last three games as we've already talked about 35th most targets 30th in catches 30th in yards seven touchdowns so like he had a really good year and the, the thing that's crazy to me was I just did like a game by game comparison between him and Julio last year to just like yeah. see who scored more points. Yep. So Julio missed missed a game. Ridley missed the last three games, so they played twelve games together um, because of injuries. Would you like to guess what the breakdown was of of who scored more points in those twelve games? Six so, and six. Uh, on, it was it was seven and five in favor of. Um, in favor of Julio. Oh, okay. So I, I knew it was that close because I owned Julio last year, and I remember being frustrated at watching Calvin Ridley score repeatedly. Right. Um, I wonder. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, that, that that was the difference, right? So Julio outscored Ridley seven out of seven out of the twelve weeks. Julio scored four touchdowns the first three weeks, and they didn't score again until week fifteen after yep. Calvin Ridley wasn't playing anymore. Yep. Um, and Calvin Ridley scored seven times in the 12 games that he played. Yep. So it really comes down to touchdowns. Drove me nuts. Yeah. Um, what I think would be interesting if we looked at would be like the head to head is interesting, but I would be interested in the head to head week eight on after they traded Mosa new. And then what that split was between games that they both played in favor of who, you know, well, yeah, I mean, well, granted, it's such a small sample I'll, size at that point. Yeah. I don't even know if it's valid, right? It, and I'll I'll tell you that I'm sure Ridley was the better of the two after Muhammad Sanu got traded because Julio didn't score a touchdown. There you go. So, yeah, right. Julio led at the beginning of the season, right? Correct. Right. Correct. So there, yeah. So it was in favor. It was in favor of Ridley. It's just it's so high. He's going as. He's going as the 14th overall wide receiver right now. Like ESPN has him ranked at 15. It's just, it's a team's number two. He's never been, he's never finished this high before. It's so like, I and everybody's projecting him that high. It's just, I would rather take 150 plus targets out of Allen Robinson there. Like I just yeah. would. Yep. So... Yeah, no doubt. And I, just to look at their their playoff schedule, um, it's at L.A. Chargers, home against the Bucks, and then at Kansas City. I mean, can, can you imagine the Falcons and Chiefs fantasy That's title gonna on the line? It's going to be raining fantasy points. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be uh, yeah. insane. Yeah, it would, it, it would be awesome to own somebody on those two teams for that Week 16 game if, if you Julio can get to the still title won't game. score a tutty, though. No, I know. <laughs> Come on, Julio. Oh man. Uh, yeah, and, and right. The I mean, the only other X factor that we haven't really talked about too much is Todd Gurley, and just yeah, how well, we much, touched on it know, a little bit, but yeah, you know how how much of a of a touchdown vulture could he be? Will they be running the ball more? Um, I I think they might a little bit, but I mean, if if they go from the the number one passing team to the number five passing team, there there's still enough targets to to go around there. Right. So, yeah, I, I I looked at all of, of basically what you talked about and it was just like I I have Ridley way too low um and and I mean this this is per ESPN which which really kind of sums it up well. Uh he finished 27th or better at the wide receiver spot in 9 of his 13 outings. So, like I think 27 has to be his floor from a ranking standpoint so that so I, I need to bump him up. 
Um, and then he, he was at 14 before he got hurt. And, and that, that's where he's ranked this year. Could he outperform that theoretically? Sure. Yeah. But full season I, without I, I, Mosa new. Yeah. But I, I would be hesitant to, to be taking him over this, some of the guys that you mentioned. And yeah. for that reason, he probably won't be on either of our teams this year just because we're just can't really justify the ADP game. No, I can't justify drafting a team's second wide receiver that's never done it before over somebody I know that's going to get 150 plus targets. I just can't do it. Yep. Um, I agree. All right. Let's move on to our second stay away, avoid this person in your drafts. That is Keenan Allen. My guy. I love Keenan Allen. Yeah. Love him so just not much. This year. Yeah. Right. Uh, Our consensus, 63rd overall player, my 64th, Alex's 65th. Huge discrepancies in our rankings here. ESPN has him at 43rd overall. So again, we're talking 20 picks higher on this guy, you know, a round and a half higher. Thank God the world siding with the Sackos on this one. His average draft position, well, not so much. It's lower than ESPN's. It's just not nearly... It's not in the 60s. His average draft position is is right at about 50. He's going as the 20th wide receiver off the board currently. Um, he was 2019's wide receiver eight. He finished with 149 targets, 104 catches, just shy of 1,200 yards, and six touchdowns. I am not excited for Keenan Allen, even a smidge. As long as Tyrod Taylor is the quarterback and people can maybe try and talk me into Justin Herbert, but like he's not, he's not Joe Burrow. He's not Kyler Murray. He was drafted as a project to sit there for a year. Yeah. You don't, you don't want him being the quarterback. If he's a quarterback, if if you, if you you don't want, yeah, you do not want a rookie project to be the starter. Yeah, so I'm assuming it's a full season of Tyrod. Um, now, to to get an idea of how Tyrod can do in supporting a wide receiver one overall, I took the esteemed pleasure of looking at the very, very potent 2015 and 2016 Buffalo Bills offense. I, I did the same thing and I literally have it all written down and it hurt so oh. hard to look at it. It was so bad. We got to tell the people these, these illustrious so stats that are going to prop up. Don't Keenan, do it. Keenan Allen is a wide receiver one. He <sighs> completed 269 out of 436 passes, 62% completion for a whopping 3,023 yards. He, he in this is 2016. He scored. He threw for 17 passing touchdowns and six picks. 2015 like the Bears quarterback on an annual basis. 242 passes completed out of 380. Just about a 64 percent completion percentage. A whopping 3,035 yards. Hot stuff. 20 touchdowns, six picks. And then I looked at the his number one receivers in those two years and where they finished. Bob Woods in 2016 had a line of 76 uh, targets, 51 catches for 613 yards and one score. Put Sorry, you a, said that was their, you, you said that was their leading receiver. Yes, their leading receiver in yep. 2016 put up a whopping 92 and a half points in half PPR scoring. Would have finished as wide receiver 66 last year, and that's Not Robert nice. Woods who is ranked inside like the top 15 everywhere this season. He had a whopping 17% target share. So they didn't, he didn't really lock onto him. Um, I will concede Sammy Watkins, a la 2015. He went for 96 targets. So still like 50 targets shy of guys that we're talking about being drafted around where Keenan Allen is currently going 50 targets less. Um, Sammy Watkins line from 2015 was 96 targets, 60 catches for just over a thousand yards, 1047 
propped up by nine touchdowns in 13 games. He had uh, 188 points in half PPR, would have been wide receiver 17 last year. Granted, that was in 13 games in a 16-game season. Assuming he kept up that pace for another three games, it would have been insane. He would have finished as a top three wide receiver last season. However, I found this. He had a 25% target share, which is obscene. It's like that's extremely high. So good good for Sammy Watkins in 2015. I'm glad that he was able to command that target share. Good However, job, there's you. this beautiful quote from Watkins. Um, through the first five games of 2000 and of the 2015 season, Sammy Watkins, who only played in three of the games because of a calf injury, had just seven catches for 99 yards. He voiced his frustra- his frustration before game six, saying, you came up to draft me and I'm not getting targets. That's a problem. You're making me look bad and you're making yourself look bad. Why not make both of us look good? It's a good quote. That's, that's a, a really wide, good quote. That's a wide receiver one from Tyrod Taylor, who went on to just light the world on fire after that quote. Is, is that why you told me this before? We, I think you told me that exact quote before we started recording today. I believe so. Yeah. So, like, I'm just, I have no confidence. I have no confidence. Keenan Allen is fantastic. You know who's not fantastic? Tyrod Taylor. Like, he, I'm just... The passes are going to be everywhere. It's just, it's not going to be pretty. There's no preseason for the guy to learn the offense. He only throws for 3,000 yards, and it maybe gets to 20 touchdowns. Like, I want Keenan Allen as, like, a flex in the fifth or sixth round, not as my second wide receiver. Like, man, um... Is there, is there I, any upside that we're missing here? He's the wide receiver one. He's going to have, what, 125, 130 targets? Or like, Maybe. But, like, I mean, you just ran it down. In 2015, his leading receiver had 96 targets. In 2016, 76. his leading re- or, or uh, fi- no, in, in 2015, 15, yeah, 96 targets. 96. Yeah. In 2016, the leading targets was 76. And in 2017, the leading targets was 74. Like, yeah, that's not... That doesn't support anyone. The like, if you look at the, I mean, I did this, the exact same thing. The only upside that I see in that offense is that Hunter Henry will be potentially consistent. Yeah, that, that he's shown that he can get the tight end the ball. But even Charles Clay was, I mean, he, it, nobody was jumping you know, off five hundred right five hundred twenty eight yards, five hundred fifty two yards, and five hundred fifty eight yards. Like he, he did, he never had over six hundred yards. Matchup. Yeah. Yeah. So the, uh, I think you're going to see the Chargers try to run a Baltimore dollar store or dollar general offense. That's what this is. He's the yeah. dollar version of freaking Lamar. Yeah. And, you know, Tyrod in 2015, he had 104 carries for 568 yards. In 2016, he had 95 carries for 580 yards. In 2017, he had 84 carries for 427 yards. So, I mean, theoretically, Tyrod actually is going to be a a not terrible bye week replacement from a floor perspective because he's no. going to have rushing yards. But no, we just, aren't talking about quarterbacks, you know? No, I know. But right. And that, but that's the only value that's there in that offense from a fantasy perspective. I complete. Well, him and Eckler, I would argue. But yeah, correct. And my guy, Justin Jackson, that I talked about. A couple episodes go. ago, um, just to just to plug that in our first Sacco studs and, and to sleepers further plug, episode. yeah, and to further plug, we also took the liberty of breaking. So, talk a couple little things just about the podcast. Um, we know that for all of our YouTube watchers, watching an hour long podcast may be a lot, considering like the average YouTube video length is might be like I don't know a minute. Um, People don't have attention spans. Shocker, they're right. So what we're doing? I can barely get through recording this. It, <laughs> so I, I can't. I can't, I can't imagine well, what people we're doing watching try, it for an hour. Oh my god! Right. So, but to try in an effort to be a little bit more consumable for the YouTube audience, um, if you would like to watch highlights and clips, I am taking the liberty of breaking out all of our sleeper candidates because, like, I just know when I look on YouTube for 
like at least leading up to drafts is I really only care about sleepers and like the rankings of the top guys. I don't really look for a whole lot else. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking up all of our sleeper guys and I am putting them in their own playlist. So you can just watch us talk through all of them. And though it's, it's just, it's five to 10 minute clips of all of our podcasts talking about individual players. So if you, when you get done watching this and you want to watch this, uh, the sleeper playlist, I'll link it at the end of the video. There you go. Boom. Zoom. Um, Let's talk some ADP game. Oh. Guys okay. going near Keenan Allen in ADP. Again, he's going at 49 and a half right now, about um, 50th overall. He is our consensus 30 wide receiver. I haven't ranked at 28. You have him at 32 at the position. ESPN has Keenan Allen ranked all the way up at 22. So a low end wide receiver too. Guys going near him, would you rather have Keenan Allen or DJ Chark? Oh, give me all the Chark, baby. They're going back to back. Uh, Keenan Allen or DJ Moore? That's not even close. Going back to back right now. Keenan Allen or Juju? Juju. Ranked or currently going five spots ahead of Keenan. Allen Robinson. It's crazy. Right, like six spots ahead. Um, Like all these guys are going right around where Keenan Allen is going. T.Y. is going two spots before him. Robert Woods is going right before him. Like, man, I just, I feel bad for whoever doesn't watch our podcasts or other people's podcasts and just end up with Keenan Allen on their team. It's woof, woof, man. Yeah, and it's, it's not, again, it's not because he doesn't have the talent. It's just what we think that offense is probably going to look like. And I do not trust them to be able to get the ball to the outside. And that goes for Mike Williams too. I just keep it. Yeah. I mean, Keenan Allen's going to get moved and he'll play a lot of slot and stuff and they're going to get creative and getting him the ball. I wouldn't be surprised if he had a couple of run plays or something just because they have to get him the ball. Like he's a nasty route. Like he gets open all the time. So, but, Maybe, maybe there is something there we're not seeing, but I I just wouldn't take him. Yeah, where, where what I am seeing taken. is Tyrod Taylor throwing for three thousand yards and seventeen touchdowns and three thousand yards and twenty touchdowns, and being like, "Yay, high flying yeah. offense! Give me that receiver." Mm. Um, no thanks. Right. All right. Let's move on. Let's talk about somebody else people should avoid in drafts this year. That is DeAndre Swift. I cons- can't believe how high he's going, honestly. Consensus, 79 overall. He's my 70th at the position. He is your 91st. So Not not the position overall. Yeah. No, oh, I'm sorry. Did I say at the position? I meant yep. yes. We are consensus 79th overall. I am 70th overall. Alex is 91 overall. Um, ESPN has him ranked at 54th overall and his current ADP is just under 70. Say, say what the actual ADP is. It's nice. 69.9. There you go. Pervert, which is the middle well end of middle end of the sixth round is where he's currently being drafted for a rookie running back in Detroit's offense. (laughs) He's a so second funny. round pick for our former lead rusher for Georgia for the last two years. Had Don't almost care. had almost 2,300 rushing yards on 359 carries, 17 touchdowns. He also showed he has the chops to catch the ball with 56 catches, 513 yards, and four more scores. The Lions, the Detroit Lions, have finished dead last in the NFL in rushing yards four separate times, including most recently in 2017. <laughs> Please give me that running back in the sixth round. I want him in a split time rookie running back during a COVID season without preseason that won't know pass blocking schemes on the NFL's like top five pass happiest offenses. Please give me that guy where they have to play the Bears and the Vikings and the Packers twice, six six times. Yeah, 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 exactly. Please give me that guy in the sixth round. Um, Detroit's run game hasn't ranked in the top half of the league at the end of a season, a single time, (laughs) literally ever. 
They have not ranked in the top half of the league ever at the end of a season in running. Well, no, th- th- that can't be right. Even with Barry Sanders, th- th- there has to be a cutoff there somewhere. I don't know. I- I've- I'll let you know. Okay. Um, and, and here we can, I think we can say very confidently, at least since Matt Stafford has come into the league in 2009, they finished well, they finished dead last in rushing yards four separate times, including 2015 and 17, like recently. Yeah. Uh, um, carry on Johnson is still a thing. Ladies and gentlemen, he had the NFL's second highest yards per carry at five and 5.4 yards per carry in 2018. Matt Patricia hates running backs and he loves running back committees. In 2018, uh, on Johnson averaged almost 12 carries and 3.7 targets when he and Blunt were both active. Lee Garrett. However, Mr. Blunt dominated all of the goal line touches. All of them. When asked about a, when asked about a committee... Matt Patricia, Matt Patricia's thoughts were, I think it's a position specific thing where those guys, they take a lot of hits. They're in those situations a lot where their bodies are taking some pounding. So you want to be conscious of how many plays they're getting, especially early on in the year. This was further emphasized by GM Bob Quinn. I never use the word bell cow. The way the NFL's set up nowadays, you've got to have multiple backs. So to keep everyone healthy and fresh through the second half of the season, it's not good to have just one main guy. There's no preseason. Yikes. He's not going to play a third down because he's not going to th- know the pass protection on the NFL's like top five pass happiest offense. Carry on Johnson is good at football. He's like, okay at minimum. I think he's above average. Okay. Um, it's a it's a it's a split and it's a rookie like is is he going before carry on they're, they're oh, like I'm, right next to I'm, each other I'm, right? I'm, I'm saving this for last i'm saving okay. that for last <laughs> okay um can i can, can can we play a fun game just because i looked it up yeah what do you got? I, I since since matt stafford came into the league i looked up who their leading rusher was on their team every single uh, year since, since 2009 Mel? well he's in there yeah he was my guy for <laughs> for like a year i remember i, I hated you loved to use some joik bell and every I time he scored joik a t- bell Every time Joyke Bell scored a touchdown alex texted joik the bell. entire freaking fantasy football league joik <laughs> bell I love Joik Bell. And then he started. Well, didn't you call him like the next great NFL running back instead yeah, of they the just never gave him, Yeah, Jackson they never gave him the ball. I, I might have missed on that one. Uh, two, 2009, Kevin Smith had 747 rushing yards. Ooh. 2010, Javid Best. Javid. Was waiting, Jav, Javid Best. Yeah. I, he was going to be really good until he. He was so small and then he got that really concussed. nasty hit, right? Yeah, he had a couple of them. I mean, even going back to Cal. Yeah, yeah, uh, he, yeah. I remember that one. Yeah, yeah. so it, he was the leading rusher in 2010 and 2011. His uh, rushing yards those two years were 555 and 390 yards. Hey, listeners, if you want to see a gnarly concussion, literally just Google oh. job at best UCLA. Oh, man. Or Cal, I'm don't, sorry. Yeah, don't. It's real bad. Um, oh, man. 2012, Mikel LaShore. Wow, that's a name. Yeah, had 798 rushing yards. Wow, so we're really breaking the bank here. Uh, 2013, the only 1,000-yard rusher in uh, in Matt Stafford's tenure as the Detroit Lions quarterback. Any guesses? These are just these are depressing numbers. It is. Uh, Reggie Bush had 1,006 rushing yards. Uh, Joke Bell had 650 rushing yards and they both had over 500 yards receiving. So that was like the only year that that's they were like vi- total yards. That's good. Yeah. Like very viable. Right. 2014 Joke Bell 860 rushing yards. 2015 Amir Abdullah 597 rushing yards. I thought he was going to be so good. The, the Amir Abdullah hype because of how he looked in that preseason. His rookie year. Astronomical. And, and he was bad. Nothing. Yes. Uh, 2016, Theo Riddick was their leading rusher with 357 yards. Zach Zenner had 334 rushing yards. What year was that? Uh, 2016. 
So was that carry on's rookie year? I want to was that no, no, carry on's only been in the league for two years. Oh man. Wow, that is a poor situation. 2017, Amir Abdullah was back to beating their leading rusher with 552 yards. Potent. 2018, Carry On had 641, Legarrett had 418, and 2019, Carry On had 403, and Bo Scarborough uh, had 377. The point being, I'm never going to draft a Detroit Lions <laughs> running back <laughs> ever. I don't, I don't care. I I don't care if DeAndre <laughs> Swift is sitting there in the 14th round. I I will not draft him. I don't. I just, just don't care. They're just off your board. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't want to look at him on my team. I don't even want to be tempted you don't to play look him. At him. No, the Lions are threatening, man. They. I mean, I just went through a list. On their one, they had one running back over a thousand yards. Basically, every other running back on this list averaged under fifty yards a game. Yeah, but the, none of those guys are DeAndre Swift. I don't care. I don't trust them to. Like, I, I don't know if there's like a curse of Barry Sanders. Like, <laughs> I just don't, I don't want a Detroit Lions running back. He's going, I, I just don't, I don't even want to deal with right it. now. What's that? Yeah. No, thanks. No chance. He's our consensus 35th overall running back, which is flex worthy. I have him at 30. <laughs> Alex has him outside of flex territory at 39th overall. That, yes. that is the correct ranking. I don't. <laughs> I just don't care. <laughs> I should that just take him off the board. Ranking. I should. I should just not rank him or carry on. Honestly, uh, just zero. ESPN has him at twenty sixth at running back. So flex worthy, just higher than we have him by like ten spots. Now, um. Yeah, let's we're let's do the ADP game first. Okay, I I don't know if there's a point to it because you're gonna want everybody else given what you yep, just said. I, yeah, literally, I will take anybody else's name you say. I don't care what it is. Um, Swift is going at 70th, running back 30 off the board. Going at 69th is Cortland Sutton. Gimme, that's nice, and I would take Cortland Sutton. Cam Akers, another rookie running back for the Rams. At going at I'm not going to take. I, I'm not going to take a rookie running back this year. Neither. Brandon Cooks, seventy-two. Oh, going, yes, Cooks. Going after DeAndre Swift. Geis, wow. Geis, baby. Uh, I would take Geis over, going, over him. He's going at seventy-three. Devontae Parker. I would take Parker. At 76. Nice voice crack, by the way. Thanks. Uh, Marlon. I was hoping to sneak that one through. Marlon Mack. Backup, backup, maybe? Question mark? Running back in Indy? That's a tough one. I, I No, you know what? I would take Mack. Don't care. All right. Kareem Hunt. Definitely take Kareem Hunt. He's going at 64th overall again. Swift is going at 70. Ronald Jones. Uh, not even close. Give, give me all of Ron Ron. You can get Ronald Jones eight picks after DeAndre Swift right now. That That's ridiculous. However, I feel like the Ronald Jones hype is building. So I, I hope it stays very low. Although right. I've... For all of our listeners, for everybody yeah. that's listening to us, when you do a mock draft, just pass just, on by. On yeah, Ronald just give Jones. it. Just give him another round. Yeah, just, just give him another round. Just let the computer draft him. You don't need to, you know, upset the algorithm. Bring him up. Just let him skate on by for the rest of us to take, please. When it's actual draft time, um, the one person I think you might take over. DeAndre Swift, will you where what would you do between DeAndre Swift and Damian Williams? 2.9 yards per carry. I I don't care. I'll just give give me just give me Damian. Yeah. I, I just don't. You know what the answer is? The, the answer is a shot of Captain Morgan spice rum. Oh uh, yeah, well, is. yeah. <laughs> you would not draft either of these guys. No, I, for for the record, I, I definitely have DeAndre Swift ranked considerably higher than Damian Williams. So, um, <laughs> but you still wouldn't the, want him. Yeah, I wouldn't want to take him that early. No, no question. Um, is Carryon Johnson a value pick this season? Given that there is 
no preseason. You have to think carry on Johnson will then be on the field on third downs while Swift is at least learning pass plays and, and pass blocking for, yep. uh, for Mr. I'm sorry. I almost said Sam, but Mr. Matthew Stafford to try and keep him upright for a full season this year. Um, Carry on's ADP is currently 90th overall, going in the middle of the eighth round. I would much rather have that. Three yeah, rounds just, later. Three yeah. Well, two two rounds. Two two and some. Yeah. I think I would take considering I think he gets at least more playing time at the beginning of the season. And I think carry on is actually good at football. He just hasn't been able to stay healthy the last two seasons. Right. But yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, again, we're, we're just trying to highlight, highlight him because yeah, he might have the talent, but again, it's another offense thing and it's a history thing where Matt Stafford has just never had other than honestly, Reggie Bush who had 1500 total yards in 2013. He, he's never, he's never had a viable, even really RB two. um, in that offense so for that reason i'm out and i would rather like if somebody else gets him and he goes off then i'll deal with that later but i i just don't even want the headache on my team yep all right moving on our last avoid this is a later round player this is an avoid for you this is this is not necessarily an avoid for me okay um (sighs) <sighs> Our consensus, 114th overall player. That's because you didn't rank him in your top 125 for clarification. You know what? You're damn right I didn't. Yeah, you're incorrect. I am not in. I am factually correct. No. Consensus 114. The, the double threat, Tariq Cohen. Yeah. I did not rank him in my 125, which is why he is all the way down here at 114 because we penalized anybody that one of us didn't rank. Alex has him all the way up at 72 overall. Boom. Which is a joke. Nope. He won't finish in the top 75. Uh, Sure he will. He, he has before. Th- okay. ESPN has ranked him at 67th overall. However, that is PPR rankings. I would like to think that we we ranked based on half PPR. So I would like to think that good old ESPN would rank him considerably lower than 67th overall uh, in a half PPR setting. His average draft position. The world agrees with your boy. That's all I have to say. His ADP. 122.9. It's fine. I would Glorious. love to get him that late. G- give me an 11th round Tariq Cohen pick. He is please. the 48th running back going off the board. 122.9 puts him 22.9 divided by 12. Wow. Early t- or early 11th. Beginning of yep. the 11th round. Sorry, so he, children, learn your multiplication tables. Don't be dependent on cell phones like I am. It's it's fine. He's he's going for the forty eighth running back. Currently, yes, and that's last almost year. Too last high. year he was running back thirty three. I understand that, but he's also not good at football, and he has no ceiling. In two thousand eighteen, he was running back thirteen. Okay. My turn. So how so how is he going to be? Running back 50. Um, so 2018, you hit the nail on the head. I had him at running back 16 that year. Um, 99 rushes, 444 yards, three touchdowns, rushing, a uh, whopping 91 targets, 71 catches, 725 yards, and another five scores receiving. That all good. changed. He was real good. That all changed last year. 2019 finishes running back 33. He his 99 rushing attempts plummeted to 64. His rushing yards were cut in more than half with yep. f- 
from going from 444 yards to 213. He did not have a rushing score last year. However, his receptions actually increased, and so did his targets. He had 104 targets, 79 catches. Uh, the yards, oh boy, did those yards go down, though. Yeah, he, Since, right. He had eight more catches and 269 less receiving yards. That yes, doesn't make any did. sense. And he only had yeah. three scores compared to five the previous season. His, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. If you guys want to, if his ADP stays the 10th, 11th round, sure. Draft Tariq Cohen. You know why? Just, you know, you do it. I won't. While his pass work has gone up year over year, his running work literally just crashed over that same time. He only has 64 rushing attempts last year, and his pass game involvement really wasn't impressive last season at all. He averaged 10 plus yards per catch in 2018, which went all the way down to 5.8 yards per catch last season. They little bubble screen crap tosses behind the line that went nowhere. Like that was the Tariq Cohen experience last season. He's just, he's a gadget mismatch kind of guy that I don't think should really even be called a running back. I, I don't, I mean, I don't know what you want to call him. Like his lack, he has no, he has a real big lack of involvement in the running game. And then, I would say mediocre involvement in a passing game that really only supports one wide receiver. Like he's not going to get it done as a running back. And so I don't think 2018 is a ceiling anymore because the bears drafted David Montgomery. And that's what changed prior to 2019. The bears didn't have David Montgomery they had Jordan Howard and Jordan Howard was as one dimensional as one dimensional can be. The guy caught zero balls. And so they put Tariq Cohen on the field more to try and be that sort of double threat. You don't know if we're running, you don't know if we're passing. So he got more work. And then what did the bears do? They're like, wow, our running back room is not great. And they drafted David Montgomery. David Montgomery had a higher DVOA than Tariq Cohen last year. I think his Usage is going to continue to increase. I'm just not. He's just a check down sweep pass catching five yards of play. I'm just not. Not not about Tariq Cohen. He had. Last year, he had 12 single point games. He did. And only scored in the double digits twice. It's true. There's any, I would take damn near anything else in the 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th round than a guy that's not going to get running back or work. And yeah, okay. He has a floor. You know what his floor is? It's five points. And he pretty much scores that every week. Like I don't want that at flex. And I think that even if Montgomery gets hurt, I don't think that Cohen turns into like a three down back. The guy's like five, six. That is also accurate. So I just, and the ADPs, man. Yeah, he's going in the 10th round. That's fine. The the 11th round. Yeah. He, he, so here, here's where I disagree with you. He had 79 catches last year, the fourth most for running backs. The three running backs in front of him were Christian McCaffrey, Eckler, and Alvin Kamara. You want to crown his ass and crown his ass. I know that he is not better than all the other running backs that were not mentioned. But I'm just saying that the catches are there to be a legitimate flex player. Yes. Can you imagine if those targets went to David Montgomery instead. Well, so right. I just looked up what the difference was between David Montgomery last year and Jordan Howard the year before just to for for sake. So last year, David Montgomery had 35 targets, 25 catches the year before that Jordan Howard had 26 targets and 20 catches. Um, It's a rookie though. I mean, no, I know. I'm, I'm just saying that there wasn't that big of a difference from like one to the other, which I would have expected there, there might be. 
Um, I also want to emphasize that Tariq Cohen had 104 targets last year, which was the third most for running backs. The only two in front of him were McCaffrey and Austin Eckler. He had he only had 456 receiving yards, which was the tenth most for running backs. And every running back in front of him that had more receiving yards was an RB2 at worst. Everybody was in the top 20 except for James White, who was 22nd. Did they all put up 12 single point games too, like Treat Cohen? Or did they do better? No, they didn't. But oh. that's what I'm saying is that I wouldn't expect that to continue because I th- I think he's still the... S- I mean, a year ago, I would have said that he was the second best playmaker in that offense. Um, I, I don't know who the second best playmaker is in that offense at this point. I, I just don't know. I also don't really trust Nagy to figure out who to get the ball to either. Maybe that changes with Nick Foles being the quarterback. Uh, if, if because apparently Trubisky can't can't run that offense. So because of that, if if Foles is the quarterback, maybe you do see a little bit of a rebound for Tariq Cohen. Um, I I chase I chase the catches. I. I yeah, you do. If 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 I can get the catches, then especially going in the in the eleventh round. I mean, in, in our mock draft, I took him took him at nine nine nine. Um, so basically a tenth round pick. I, again, I'm I'm very comfortable with that. I also want to mention that he was on the field more in 2019 than he was in 2018, both in number of plays and in percentage of 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 snaps. That whole um, team was just bad last year. Like it was just. No, I know. I know. I, I, so bad. I don't disagree with you. Um, little hidden added bonus points, depending on how your league set up with return yards. Um, he is the punt returner. So you, you could get some some small change points there. I'm not saying that's why you should draft him. Pitching punt returners, huh? That's, that's what I did. Uh. <laughs> All right, let's just go. Let's go to ADPs. No, hold on. One, one more thing. Playoff matchups. Really, really like the Bears playoff matchups. Home against the Texans at Minnesota, yeah. who, where, where they actually play really well or have historically. It's and then week dome. six. And I then can, week six, week 16 yeah. is, is at Jacksonville. Okay. Yep. So I, I, I do like their playoff That's, matchups. None of that is scary. No, none of it's scary. And their first six weeks are real good, too. So I, oh I, my I God, are their first six weeks appealing? Yeah. So I, I mean, I think you could see the Bears get off to a very good fantasy start. Um, Allen Robinson, be, baby. Yeah. I, I, there's gonna, there's gotta be somebody else. Um, so hold on, just real quick, looked up the Bears' schedule um, at Detroit. Yum. At, at at the Giant, or sorry, at Detroit, home against the Giants. Delicious. At Atlanta. Tasty. Home against the Colts. Oh, eat it up, baby. Home against the Bucks. <laughs> and then at Carolina. Like that those are six real good games to start out with. And their last three are pretty good too. So you're already you're looking at nine like pretty somewhat decent fantasy matchups. I I think Tariq Cohen is has and yes, he might be a gadget guy, but I, I just think that the targets and the way that they use him, and it just seems like whenever they needed a play, that they would put him in the backfield because they trust him more than Montgomery. Um, wh- one last thing, just I just wanted to run down his targets. I, I know you obviously know that they're high, but I mean he was getting more targets than than some wide receiver twos behind the and, line and of scrimmage. I, yeah, but I, I it matters though. Like here. Here's a game by game, and I know everybody wants to hear this, so I'll go quick. 10, 5, 4, 5, 7, 12, 3, 5, 4, 6, 9, 4, 6, 10, 4, 10. So, like, he's going to get at least, he, he's going to have a, a, Five to a ten low floor, again. but he, he will score. He, he's nothing more than a, than a, a bye week replacement. At, yes. at this point, but but I do think the the ce- the ceiling is there, and it has been proven that it's there in Matt Nagy's offense. And so, does it change with a better quarterback? I'm banking on potentially yes. Yeah, with uh, what was it, five point eight yards per catch last season? Like, 
I don't think they did a very good job of getting him the ball in space that he could actually no. have a time to make a play and and their do line something. sucked. It was ter- terrible last year. All right, let's talk ADPs. Tariq Cohen or Sterling Shepard? Ooh, I would take Sterling Shepard. Shepard is going four spots in front of him. Tariq Cohen or Jamison Crowder? I would take Crowder. Crowder is going seven spots after Tariq Cohen. That's so criminally low. It's It's insulting. Also, hey, another person for all of y'all to leave nice and low. While you're doing your mock drafts, just scoot on by Jamison Crowder for the rest of us, please. Uh, Tariq Cohen, Anthony Miller. Uh, I would actually take Cohen. Okay. Uh, Tariq Cohen, Sammy Watkins. Hmm. I think Watkins could be fine if he stays healthy. Um, so I would guess I would roll the dice on Watkins. Tariq Cohen, Tony Pollard, or Chase Edmonds, or Zach Moss. Those are the running backs that he's going around. Yeah, I would take Cohen over all, all three of those. Yeah, the by, other guys by a pretty are, easy margin. The other guys are backup slash handcuffs, except for Zach Moss. I feel it could actually be a pretty nasty late round draft pick this season. But Right. Just, just the fact that that Cohen was on the field for 60% yeah. of plays or whatever that was last year. Um I, He's just going to have more opportunities than all than all three of those guys. Yeah. All right, well injuries. That, that does it for our avoid these players while you draft episode content hotness. Uh, before we leave, I do want to talk about one piece of news. The, Baseball season started. There's that. Go Cubs. I did appreciate the jersey. Um, the Washington football team has been renamed. The Washington football team. <laughs> I I actually kind of like it. Yeah. Yeah, it it kind of is old it's old school in a way. Especially it's with just like temporary the, because the there's names like an that they established want are 1932 in on it. I just think it I don't know, I think it's kind of cool. Instead of logos, they're just putting the players numbers on the side of the helmets in gold and none of the color schemes changing for now because they got to litigate to get their name. I love that it's going to be like it's a temporary thing, but they're already selling merch with it on it, and then they can they can change their name again and sell more merch. Oh, uh, it's going to be a freaking money making machine. Everybody's going to want that temporary merch too. Like think about in twenty years when you could be collectible. Yeah, like twenty fifty years when you have a jersey that says the Washington Football Team on it, with some like Terry McLaurin signature or something like. Pristine auction is going to be lighting it up. And and so will the NFL uh, jersey sales of of that team, but yeah, I mean we I guess we could rename our podcast like two out of shape thirty year olds talking sports or something like that in <laughs> in honor of in honor of Washington's football team. I'm gonna have that's what that's what our Alan Lazard insult is gonna be. Hi, Alex. You're an out of shape thirty something year old, and you suck at fantasy football. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go back to where you came from, Alan. Um, uh, and again, if you have not listened to our last episode, like uh, I know we encourage you to like tweet at us, uh, send us messages if you have our personal cell phones, go to Facebook, go to Instagram, like reply to different things that that we do. But how has nobody commented that? I know not a single person. Alan, you get no love. That I mean, people, please crap on Jason. It's he deserves it. On that note, let's go to the social media page. Everybody, please listen, like, subscribe. We're available on all platforms. We are on all the social medias at the FF Sackos. It was a good, it was a good day on Twitter for, for the fantasy football Sackos Twitter account. Um, please listen to us everywhere. Go to the website. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell, get all the notifications, do all the things. We uh, we miss you already. And Alex, congratulations. I think next time we podcast, you'll be a dad officially sack daddy. It's true. Um, good job by me like 10 months ago and uh, looking looking forward to, to being a dad and, and all that entails. 
And as for what happens with the podcast while I'm gone, uh, I can only imagine what you're going to do with it uh, while, while I'm not here. So sorry in advance to everybody for having to listen to those. I have a feeling you'll still be with us. Good night. Oh.